Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, hi, I'm uh, Graham Richardson Locke. Welcome to the eighth in our series of Festival Coffee Breaks. Any of you uh, that have joined us before will know that I'm Festival's technical manager. However, if it's your first session, I'd just like to let you know that I've been working in screen and large format digital printing for over 35 years. I joined the industry in 1984 as a trainee screen printer and my passion for print has led me through roles in management and directships in point of sale, textiles and military electronics before I joined FESPA in my current role. I'm committed to the value of peer-to-peer -peer networking and know that my knowledge has been enhanced by participating in many events um, and conferences organised by and supported by FESPA. And as an international speciality print trade federation, FESPA continues to focus its efforts on knowledge sharing and community building within the screen and wide format digital print landscape. Since FESPA's foundation 58 years ago, its goal has been to help print businesses using screen and digital printing to progress and take advantage of the latest technology. We aim to keep today's session to about 45 minutes as we understand that your time is limited as you deal with your many daily challenges. We hope that you'll benefit from your participation and you'll find some useful tips to build upon that support you in a disruptive and challenging market. So as we consider today's session, I'm uh, glad to have the, the support of Brian Edmondson at C in gaining insight from this well-respected branding specialist who understand the power of considered communication and the value of a host of print media choices alongside the raft of digital channels. We'll be discussing a range of topics from training a design team to design for different print products to how printers can sell themselves to an agency to get the right type of attention before finally addressing the cha changing role of sustainability in the print supply chain. I'm now going to share with you the, uh, the questions and topics for today. So in today's coffee break, we're going to look at what does the massive range of digital printed products mean to a leading creative branding agency? In this coffee break, we'll ask what London-based C have to say. I'm now going to share with you our panelist slide, which has, um, so I'm very pleased to welcome Brian Edmondson, founder and creative director at C. Um, Brian, perhaps you can uh, introduce yourself and give us a little bit more about your background and, the, and your business, please. Um, morning, all. Um, I'm Brian Edmondson, Creative Director and Founder of uh, the brand agency C. Um, my CV is probably not as long as Graham's, um, but for 25 years, C has been working alongside small, medium and large brands across the globe, across all sectors all probably with one purpose in mind, um, to differentiate themselves in the market, which, you know, if you think about these current times, even more so, it's so relevant. Brilliant, thank you, Brian. Um, I'm just gonna launch a, a poll. So before I get into the questions, if you can just um, please complete the poll, we'll leave it open for a minute. It just gives us an idea of who's joining us today. Um, so that we can yeah have a, a clear understanding of our of our wonderful attendees do they get a prize Graham? uh the only prize they get is um staying with us so i'm not sure <laughs> hopefully that'll be a decent prize okay So we have 65% digital printing, um, 20% screen printing, some signage people, some uh, textile. So it's good. We've got our, our usual mix of, of, of interesting, um, interesting creative printers with us today. Okay. Um, 
Thank you very much for doing that, everyone. Now, um, so without further delay, let's um, let's start with our first question. Um, so, Brian, I would describe you as being an advocate for creative print uh, with a great deal of experience in pushing the boundaries. Uh, how do you make the best use of digital print? Um, I, I, we consider, or I, I consider myself very lucky because we, you know, we, I, I graduated in 92, um, set C up in 96. So we've seen the, I, I remember at college seeing the first little Macs that you were supposed to, on a screen of this size, that you were supposed to design a poster of this size. Um, so we've seen that whole transition of um, how you produce, you know, and I think it's a big deal for designers, even more so now, because the exciting thing is we've got more things to, to design. You know, when the web came in, digital technology for um, animation um, and film, and it, it basically gives us, you know, some wonderful things to, to produce. But I think at the core of it is that craft. Um, the appropriateness, you know, all those years ago, producing bags and bags and boxes and boxes of print that didn't sadly see the light of day. Now with digital, um, we can be really targeted, you know, from, you know, we, we produce a lot of indigo, you know, indigo produced work. Yeah. So we can produce one um, very um, bespoke brand guidelines or a book, or um, we're currently doing something very similar at the moment where there are seven copies being produced incredibly. Now try and imagine doing that in life all those years ago, you know, incredibly. Yeah, it's a, it, uh... It doesn't, it doesn't allow, you, does it? No, it doesn't. And, but it does allow you to be really creative, use the, the you know, the more interesting papers. And I think it, it, um, it's really interesting from a premium perspective, you know, that this is tapping into the bespoke. And I think from a print production point of view, it must be equally exciting to um, feel the wave of that uh, that new idea of how you produce um, because long gone are the days of a you know a corporate brochure whatever that means it's now a website and probably more appropriately that it is um, so when it comes down to you know beautiful packaging or beautiful book um, we can be bespoke and we can be really creative with print and paper and it, it's print as a it's an it, as an experience of visual communication, isn't it? it you know, there are a, I think one of the projects I was going to ask you about is um, you've been working on uh, wayfinding and branding for a, a property development in Down and Brighton called uh, Circus Street. So yeah. it'd be great to have your insight into where you where you've used imaging across that um, across that project. Yeah, I, I mean, it's in your neck of the woods. It's uh, it's a it's a, one of our sort of place making uh, brand projects. And like all of, you know, like any modern um, contemporary uh, cross platform brand, you you are able, and you quite rightly should use screen. You should use digital. You should use um, print. And that combination um, of a project, say for Circus Street. Is, is exciting. We're working alongside probably the UK's the most creative developer. Um, we're working alongside equally one of the most creative architects. Um, so we're working hand in hand to produce um, um, metal signage, um, metal wayfinding, um, brass, combination of metals, to so then um, bespoke um, piece of print the, maybe a hundred copies um, to widescreen um, uh, big outdoor um, uh, imagery. So I think it cross, it, like all um, good identity programs, it crosses a lot of different mediums, you know, and one, you know, marketeers who think it is just web or you think it's just um, print, well, it's a combination and that's what makes it more interesting. Because, you know, when you touch to when you see a screen, to when you hear a voice, that is a brand, you know, and, it's, and it speaks consistently. Yeah. 
Um, okay, let's move on to our to the second question. Um, can you please share your thoughts on how printers could improve their communication with the creative design community? Um, I, it, it, it always amazes me. I mean, we've worked with a few printers over the years um, on their identities, and I, I do it because, you know, we, we love producing. You know, we all love, um, it amazes me why someone doesn't love going to a factory. Um, but the whole print world, their day-to-day -day work is um, engaging with um, communication. Uh, agencies, designers, design agencies and clients who spend their daily lives communicating with other clients. Yet printers don't seem to, on the whole, be able to communicate or even look at their own brand, their own identity. Um, because it is, you know, from a design point of view, you, you obviously have a, a choice and it's not a, um, it's not a choice of what kit you have. I mean, obviously that's a start of a 10, but you know, are you that type of uh, print company that really cares about design? You know, there's, there's probably a handful. Um, Gavin Martin, Posh and team, and, and probably more especially team, really have a way of just engaging with, with design agencies and designers. Um, they look at their own identities, they look at how they communicate with designers and designers, you know, we're like, we're like magpies. If we see something shiny, and shiny and sparkly, you just think, where on earth did that get produced? And, you know, we, we do collect, I collect, like all designers, we collect stuff, not just print, but when you do see that printed piece, um, you know, we, we've recently um, a catalog for 1970s by uh, the Dutch design Van Kral. I try to get uh, some ink reproduced as vibrant as it, but suddenly realize it probably had mercury in it. So, it had this, so okay. you, you see, you can't reproduce it, but you know, the printers who go that one step further and really know how to engage with designers surprisingly get the creative work, they get that um, level of um, projects because they become, and, and I really mean it, that collaborative partner with design agencies. They, they act as uh, collaborators, they, they were your, uh, they're the, your educators as well. You know, as much as we as designers, some more than others, know about print and know about print production, we're not experts in that. And we, you know, I, I sometimes try to make myself believe I am, but I'm not. And we, we rely on the expertise and knowledge of these wonderful printers who have produced for decades and decades. Um, and it amazes me why some printers don't, don't engage, don't communicate with designers, because from a commercial point of view, you might get a few more inquiries. Yeah. And I, I, I think the... Um... The issue around inspiring confidence. If you do, a, if you do a decent piece of uh, creative print uh, to supply out to your prospects, then you're likely to get their attention. If you just do a piece of standard four back four litho print, it's just there's not enough there. I don't think to to inspire creativity. And, and yeah, and but it's, it's probably not. It's not just um, uh, talking about yourself, Graham. It, it's talking about you know, maybe it's completely, it's probably the opposite. Don't, you know, guerrilla style beat your chest about how great we are, because we all know in brands that sounds a bit inflated and a, you know, we just don't believe it. But, you know, there are certain projects that we've done over the years with uh, a few printers, which are true collaborations. In fact, we've, we've just finished one, a very special project, uh, a very personal project called Embrace. Yeah. Um, with um, a photographer we worked with for over two decades now. Rankin. Like the ranking. Yeah. One. And it, it's so beautiful. It's a small format, very limited uh, uh, copies. And it's, it's beautifully printed. Uh, the paper is stunning. The image quality is tremendous. And, you know, it's, um, it's one of these things that just how you engage with printers and, and the 
the print company behind supporting this is Team Again, who um, have consistently supported the design industry because I don't I don't see it from those type of printers. Um, it's just a commercial decision. They actually care, you know, they care about it because that is the industry and um, designers, you know, they navigate to the printers doing the most creative work. You are. I think as you describe being a, a magpie, often the projects I worked on uh, when I was in creative print where you would start a project with a designer's vision, but the vision wasn't necessarily achievable because of technical constraints and actually getting into that discussion and finding the solution, looking for alternative um, remedies to, to resolve something that, that leads to a very kind of um, creative, tactile and interesting um, impactful print is the secret. So I suppose it's being, as a printer, it's being willing to get into the discussion. And one of the advantages with digital, of course, is that if a, if a, a creative designer wants a one-off sample just to prove out an idea, it might be something completely mad, like, a, you know, printing white ink onto um, sandpaper or, you know, that we now have with UV flatbed digital, we've got, you know, we can print on all sorts of different surfaces and, and substrates. I think I, I did actually, um, a couple of years ago, I had a, an unusual job that I had to print on some um, OSB plywood that was going in a, it was going into a, a, a commemorative contemplation shelter up in Scotland on the west coast. It was right ex exposed out on a mountainside and they wanted all these quotes to be printed inside the roof panels of this outdoor shelter right in the middle of nowhere. And, you know, prior to digital, maybe with screen, but the thing is there were like 12 panels, you know, the cost of setting up the repro and and actually making screens and doing it that way would have been prohibitively expensive. So it's just that looking for opportunity, isn't it? And I suppose you must appreciate it when you work with printers who show a willingness to mm. take risks and to... Um... But we, we do ourselves, I mean, we, um, we have the same process with um, persuading clients to do something something extraordinary to, to push any, uh, either it be film, whether it be digital, whether it be print production. And I think equally with printers who, who want to go on that journey as well, they, they tend to be the most attractive in terms of uh, the, the designers who want to work alongside them. You know, when we do see something or when I see something I haven't seen before, I, my, first, my first thing is who did that? You know, who, who produced that? Because there's a knowledge there, you know, and, and, you know, the vast majority of people can run probably a four color press, which I'm yeah. sure I might be able to have a go at that one, just. Um, <laughs> but I think it's, it's the ones who really know how to create these weird and wonderful things. And design agents and designers, the ones with an inquisitive, inquisitive mind tend to want to find out who they are. And, it, and it's like a beeline for, um, these printers because they consistently carry on doing this type of work with the right design agencies. Um, they're not just straightforward pieces of print. You know, they are, you know, they're, they're what, um, you know, the minders of the machines produce work day and day when they get something really extraordinary, you know, it sparks their attention as well. You know, we've never done that before. Wow, that's fantastic. Um, and I, I, you know, it's, it's very, it's, it's always very difficult, but I love, I love being on press with any sort of production, um, being on site in terms of film production is, is, is a wonder, but when you see things being made, there's a strange obsession. Designers love it. The and physicality. Lots. Yeah. And, to, and seeing the, the, the makers behind all these wonderful things, seeing how Foiling is uh, uh, producing, you know, box making or litho and digital and combinations. And 
you know, I was very lucky um, before I set SEAL. I was lucky to work at an agency um, who were working on our identity for modal papers, modal merchants, if you remember yeah. them. And um, I, I discovered being on press, seeing all these different papers. So that my knowledge came from um, that one project. It then led on to other uh, paper companies along the way. And it also leads to working with some really fine and very inspiring printers. That's great. This, uh, this um, has kind of brought in mind for me the, the next question, which is about how you kind of get your team, uh, your design team to understand the specific design considerations for such a wide range of printing processes. So, you know, for example, if you're doing a uh, screen printed piece of outdoor signage, you need to think about um, trapping and, you, you know, you've got uh, the sequence that the colours are being laid down in. I, there are across this absolute miasma of, um, of printed opportunity, there's a, there's a lot of kind of technical concern that needs to be um, put into play because otherwise things can go kind of fairly uh, drastically wrong. How, how have you approached uh, um, training and making your getting your designers to be kind of up to speed with, with the, the techniques that are um, used in print today? Yeah, I, I, I think that's a, it's a wider question uh, within my industry of um, colleges now and universities don't necessarily place um, graduates with any knowledge of production. There's a few handful that um, toe in the water. So we, we have, and we have done for the last couple of decades, um, there is um, uh, a, a very strong internship at sea. It's very structured. Um, vast majority of um, our, our design team start life as straight graduates, interns, and they, some fall away, the, the stronger ones uh, carry on and go all the way through the ranks. What we try to do, um, if possible, obviously it's been very difficult for the last 12 months, but you know how things are produced, they need to see a factory. They need to see um, how uh, printers expect artwork. They, you know, I, if, if we, I'm always embarrassed if, and we, it, we slip through the net now and again, of sending artwork that is not perfect because you know, it is part of that design process. The, Having a wonderful idea is is great, but not being able to produce it is 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 criminal. And I, I think we get um, as much as possible the design team as well as the the management uh, within C to be on press to go and see a print factory, see how it works, mm -hmm. um, and as much as possible just a day in the life of what printers do to um, produce this stuff that we design and. They come back just like wow, God, size of these machines, what, what, how this happened, and and it, and it is it's a old thing of apprenticeship, you know. When you know I I graduated and I was lucky enough to have a few um, um, visiting lecturers talk about print and um, hot metal and screen, which was wonderful. Um, but I think when you actually see it, you you engage with it and you get excited about production. You get excited about how things are um, reproduced. And we we do that as much in film production, stills, campaign. There is always you know, a team observing. And I think it's like the classic apprenticeship. You, you start your education again once you've graduated because you then find a way to not only just to produce, but then to produce differently. And I think that's helps how we produce a lot of our work. So there is, a, there is a, um, an informal sort of training in a way of wherever possible you are on press. And, and then it, I think it's interesting, um, the handful of printers who we use, they always with pride talk about their factory um, with every designer that comes to visit. Uh, and, and, you know, and I think it's as much a sort of responsibility of printers to, to educate. It's not the, the fault of um, these graduates that they know very little about print production. 
absolutely they've, they've come out in a digital world where you know they can create something motion graphic in a nanosecond um and yeah why why not but having to produce and the craft of artwork to for print production is a very different different thing it's a skill set that they need to retain print isn't dead by I, I, any way yeah. shape sure i uh, i think with um kind of puts in mind a, a job that you know when we do the direct mail uh, campaign for festival shows i try and get involved with the with the marketing team and doing things that are you know are interesting and engaging for printers so they're you know tough crowds to please but one of the uh one it was it two shows ago i did one where we were using um we were using uv uv digital um sorry uv litho but we were we were printing white to obliterate a metallic substrate and then printing four color process over it so where we had the white you had this flat color and it just looked like a regular job on paper but where the metallic shone through it was actually an explosion of pigment and that um the metallizing of the entire surface when light reflected off, off it just looked absolutely amazing. But actually doing the artworking separations was, was very, very tricky. So yeah, I think you have to have a kind of a, a curiosity and um, determination, I think are two very good qualities to have if you're a, a creative but person in this world. Yeah, I, I, and also whoever's listening today, you know, you, you've got a great and a very wonderful thing that you do day in, day out, and that is produce. You produce um, things that, that might push a print mind, it might not, um, but you, you know, anyone who produces something for a living, that is, that's as good as it gets, isn't it? You know, I, it's, um, you can at the end of the day and say, look, I've been behind this. Whether it's a physical piece of print, whether it's an image, that is a one-off or whether it's a film production campaign um you deliver something and i think there's a there's a pride and uh, excitement about that one yeah being a being a maker is a good thing absolutely um okay i'm gonna move this on to to our next question which is um really focused on are, are you looking to work with printers who present sustainable products what's your what's your approach to sustainability um, our, our uh, i mean it's a long um it's a long sort of i mean to be honest any printer these days who does not produce responsibly won't be in business it's as brutal you know we only work with uh print companies that have a certain level um and, and it's driven by our care. We produce, we're designers, we, we have responsibility in how we manufacture, how we produce our work from uh, print on paper to print on metal. Um, and, and again, to the clients, uh, you and I at Circus Street, incredibly responsible organization of um, how they produce these wonderful pieces of place. Um, so I, I don't really see the, you know, the levels, 14,000, whatever. It's almost like, um, it, don't do it for a business point of view. Do it because you care, because you have responsibility, because you produce stuff. You know, there are chains of command. There are papers that we should avoid. You know, there's um, a material, sorry, that we should avoid. Because, you know, we, we just don't do that stuff anymore. We know and we we have more knowledge of that um, and we need to be responsible about how we manufacture so I think it, it should it shouldn't just be a um, a business decision it should just be a, an, an ethical one that you it's it's first line in setting up a print organization this is it this is our that, our mantra and I think you know two decades ago or even a decade ago certain things went on and where we shouldn't be producing that way, but we we know we learn we learn and we know more about that. Um, and, I, and I suppose, as you mentioned earlier, about um, overs being left in boxes in storerooms, you know, there is no point in um, 
in having that print in existence and the the opportunity of digital is that you can think more um with more focus about targeted audiences and and how that how that print is going to earn its keep in this world basically the 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 raw materials that are employed in yeah. creating a product that they actually have a a clear value rather than the fact that you just have to make a minimum quantity of stuff mm. um, i i think it, it, it's it is a response i mean you know every every one of our clients for for many many years have their own responsibilities they have their own um social responsibility for for their own businesses and the the idea of <clears throat> whilst it would have probably been you know wonderful from a paper company's point of view all these boxes being uh reproduced it just doesn't help anyone and it, i don't think that's communication that's just uh that's just waste you know they they yeah. they'll be pulped somewhere they'll be they won't be doing the job they've been designed it's a little bit soulless you know why on earth would you want to do that it can't just be about pound, pound shilling and pence it's it's about caring what we produce and you know it's um um we have all all these responsibilities and i think it's down to both clients it's about it's down to designers and it's also about print companies advising better more efficient ways of how we produce because it'd be lovely that you only have one copy left and it's uh one to remind you of a lovely job not boxes and boxes of stuff sure yeah i have a personal um oh, i can't bear it when i see uh, a campaign run its course and there be uh overs it just says it says bad um bad estimating really to me um all right look there, let's uh let's have a look at our fifth question which is um how do you see the importance of physical print, uh, print media in, in a digital world? Um, really, I suppose this is what, what does print do that, that digital doesn't? Um, probably the same, it's a very good question. It's the same thing as what we're doing now. We're, we're, we're in a screen. Normally, I'm sure we'd be face to face. There'd be some sort of human interaction. What yeah, print yeah. does gives you that tactility that no other medium can possibly do you know we we work with a, a you know, wonderful mix of different types of brands, luxury brands if you think about the luxury brand world that is about touch that is about that instant human trigger that can tell you that the product really is as good as it says it it is so more more so than ever um digital is wonderful screen is wonderful uh, the whole medium around how we communicate now is very very targeted you know the the misconception of web web um, web design as in sort of website is not targeted it's not a targeted media um medium um social media is because we can talk to if i want to speak to graham i can put something that will pick up on your channels and i think the wonderful thing with print we can hand something to a human being yeah. and they can instantly have that uh, trigger of it's a bit slippery, slimy, thin and pathetic or substantial and I'll never forget it. You know, there is that ridiculous scene in that movie about the weight of their business card. If, if the American know. Psycho. American Psycho, yes. Yeah. yeah. And, um, but it, it is comical, but it's true. We, you know, just imagine you put all, and I think from designers point of view, you know, we work on these projects for months and months and sometimes years. So when it is finally produced, can you imagine the disappointment of it being on something awful or being printed badly? You wouldn't even, you wouldn't even contemplate that. You've worked on something that's really, really interesting, regardless of what that project is, and you want it produced to the best uh, and most efficient and wonderful way possible. So I think in terms of print media, it, it, it is exciting. We can mix medium of uh, life or screen and, and digital all together to make something that you couldn't quite make all those years ago. Yeah. So to me, that is really exciting. You know, I, I, I don't know if anyone shares that view, but you know, I- I think you've got, you've got a whole group of people that share that view here. Oh, that's good. 
<laughs> I think you know it, it is exciting. You, I'm I'm starting a couple of projects today after after this call, and you know blank sheet of paper. And how how will we then envisage that in three months' time, six months' time, and how it then gets produced in lots of different media? So I think the excitement of uh, designing in this era is the so much choice you have in terms of how you produce. I think it's actually even more special now. Um, all those years ago, it was about mass, and mass isn't sometimes that interesting. Um, well, and, and now, when you consider things like uh, interior decor, you know, with, within the wide format inkjet community, we can do you wallpaper, fabrics, upholstery, you know, there really is. If you're doing a, a rebrand for, um, for a business and you've got it, headquarters and you can look at all the different expressive uh, forms for that branding whether it's in surface pattern you know repeat patterns that are echo the the brand identity or you know there's just so much out there now and I think that's the thing for me is that you know for for printers to to be excitable about is the fact that there are so many new opportunities um, hmm. But we need to share them with people like you. We need to we need to be enthusiastic and um, show from our track record projects that have worked before um, to inspire you to come and talk to us about the, the next thing that's yeah. down the track, isn't it? It is, but I, th I think it's very difficult to do that. It, it's um, easy to say, but you know, mm. uh, we are getting you know the world is waking up again, and we're going to get back to our normal frantic 100 miles an hour pace it's very difficult to sort of stop a designer in their tracks i mean my day is absolutely full actually every day every day there's all stuff like we all have so to try to interrupt someone's day you've got to do something wonderful you've got to, to grab someone's attention well in all forms of life you know you've just and in equally it's the same for me if i want to attract the attention of a certain clients or a certain industry I've got to do something wonderful I can't just say well here's my website come and give me a call I mean that's just appalling you know you just so I suppose am I right in thinking that uh, you would be an advocate for printers to think about something physical because that's what they're making but something something interesting physical remarkable that's going to make them stand out and use direct mail as a yeah I went it, it could be. I mean, all those years ago, it, it would have been 97, 98, maybe. Um, we were invited to a, a launch of, uh, oh, I don't know what it was, it was for GS Smith. And um, after the event, there was a, a bin outside this bar, and um, we took a picture of all these swatches that were put in the bin um, on the way out from these designers. So I took a picture and basically explained to Jay Smith, look, you know, you've just got to change this. People have got to take something away. If you're trying to promote your yeah. pavement, it's got to stay on your desk. I mean, behind me um, are books, even though I'm in a temporary part of the, the house before we go back to the studio. But when I'm in my studio, there is stuff on my desk, behind my desk. Now, if it stays on my desk, He's done its job. That's it. We, we, you know, we're visual snobs of stuff that we want to collect, and I think it's got to make that point where designers want to keep it. And and the advantage right now is that you know that world of chitter chatter, they will do your job for you because you know what they're going to do is put it on social media, put it on their Twitter feed and Instagram, and look at this. So with a, a tiny little like, you've connected with. Um, that audience that you've tried so desperately to do. Yeah. Uh, GF Smith are a great case in point, actually. I know that their, their swatch brick is, it, you know, it's, it sits on my desk. And whenever I'm looking at a, a creative print project and I want to look at whether it's colour plan or wood effects, leather effects, whatever the, the, the mm. stock is, it's, it's just a very nice convenient and inspiring go-to and i think that's um 
I think it's, it's the same parallel of, of paper companies. How do they inspire designers to use their products? You know, um, we worked alongside G.S. Smith for nearly 14 years. Fedrigoni we were with to, to try to persuade um, in, in a similar way of how do you, it's like any industry that, you know, presents a product or service. How do you actually, and it's about inspiring, you know, you, you inspire them to even try it or even uh, connect with you to, to, because it's always very difficult to use a new product or use something or someone new. Um, weirdly enough, we, we enjoy it, um, but I think it has to grab your attention. It really has. Yeah, yeah. Okay, um, Brian, thank you so much for going through the first question. So I think looking at the time and I've just got some questions popping up in the Q&A. So I think let's, let's move on um, and yes, yeah, see what our attendees um, are asking. So the process here, Brian, is that I have obviously no idea what questions are coming to us. So uh, generally I kind of tend to chuck in and, and find, um, see the first one. So. I've got one here um, from Paul Sherfield. Um, do you think graphic designers leave college with the knowledge to produce press ready files? Or do you consider it the job of the printer to process these files for their needs? Um, do um, printers give enough information in this area? But that's three questions in one. That's quite cheap. Um, I, in the first instance, no, they don't leave college with the, the sufficient knowledge. And 99% um, um, of graduates don't go to college for that specific reason. However, from a print production, it must be very, very frustrating getting files that are, I don't know, um, in various formats or even... PowerPoint. Uh, yeah, it's just... So, so no, I, I, I think it's the, well, it's totally the responsibility of the design team and design agency. I, it also is a, you know, technology is changing uh, very, very rapidly. So I presume that certain printers keep up with that technology and imparting back education is a, it's a cycle, isn't it? We, we, we learn off each other, you know, we, we learn by printers, we learn, with the people that we work alongside day in day out, so it is a bit of a cycle, um, but it, it it does amaze me with the lack of uh, any print knowledge graduates have. Yeah. Very very few have that. Okay, let's move on to another one. Um, uh, so this is an anonymous attendee. Uh, so hopefully it won't be too um, controversial. Uh, what what What's, what impact of print and ink technologies and green materials versus sustainable branding and communication is there creative demand for? Okay, so hang on. So the phrasing is quite complicated. Um, Keep it simple. I think the, the question is, how concerned are clients about the, the uh, sustainability of print and ink um, when they're in their communication with you? I can probably only answer from um, our clients and that, that is extremely careful. They, they, they do care that it is it is part of their their business, but it's also down to them as individuals. So um, they they don't produce work that's uh, irresponsibly produced. Uh, it's sustainable, um, and and yes, it's as um, it's as green as it possibly can be. Um, I know there's not a hundred percent, but you know th there is a real care. So absolutely, without a doubt. Um, and again, that's part of the um, the feeding that uh, information upstream, isn't it? Really, is that print, printers need to share? Yeah, and, and also um, we, we we spoke about this earlier that it is about a 
a cross-platform brand that you know will have various medium when it comes to print we're extremely targeted and it's exciting to be targeted because we can produce in that fashion and we can you know we can we can produce with uh papers and techniques that maybe we couldn't have afforded a while ago so so i think it is you know it, it is a responsibility of everyone like we said yeah um bonnie lane has a, a question which i i like it's um I'm not sure how you'll answer this one um but um I think she she's making an observation that how how do you explain the budget being spent on design um, versus the very small budget left for printing, um, and the expectation of the client is let down due to designers not understanding the cost of print and manufacture. I suppose really for this to answer this one, it's speaking about um sees attitude towards um creating budgets isn't it because i, I think that, that's bonnie that's a great question um in terms of i mean we we live in the specific uh, design world of brand where you are judged on your performance from day one of launch <clears throat> you know we've been in that particular field for 25 years and you can't be in that particular part of graphic design without results so i think in terms of then the idea of what is produced and the budget we, we're transparent with how things and what things cost you know and however we we do attract clients who you know do want to create something very very special they may not want to produce in numbers these days like we've already spoken about but when they do produce they um you produce with quality or else what's the point because yeah. if you don't it just gets thrown away and graham's absolutely right with the brown boxes if you don't uh, produce in in that careful way so there is always a bit of budget for a better paper there is always you know what because uh, we're able now because of the limited numbers we produce to to be special um so i yeah um yeah i i think there's I, I I don't know if um, sometimes it feels like it's the opposite way around, Bonnie. That uh, um, why can't I have the budget that the print production seems to afford? But um, but you know sometimes hey, yeah, I'm sure that cuts yeah. both ways, Brian. I it think. does sometimes. Um, sometimes. I, I think that there are if you're working on a project that has you know that's for a, a luxury brand, there's a huge amount of work gone into. Uh, bespoke photography and you know that there, there can be yeah budget budget's elastic isn't it it's really about i think but, but for, also for, print, for printers we if we're clear you know so there's a it's a confidence thing isn't it so but it's if, also I, about if i as a printer if, you, if you're very smart, it's also about being smart with budgets. You know, we yeah. we sometimes have those challenges of, um, you know, I said earlier that we have small, medium and large clients and that comes with budget levels as well. And it sometimes makes your brain work quicker and sharper mm -hmm. with the smaller budgets of how do you produce? How do you get the best out of it? And I think, again, that's working with <clears throat> good print companies who, who can translate, okay, if you've got uh, a limited, how can we do it? And I think it, it does get the brain cells going of like, it can't just be the, the default paper stock or the default production. You might just need two colors. It might be on a stock that may not be that fashionable, but reproduced in a certain way, it's, it's interesting. So sometimes it's not about the money. In fact, a lot of the time, it's, it's about how you find the way. And I think that's the responsibility of a designer of finding a way because Bonnie, sometimes we don't have those budgets of projects. You've got to find a way to actually make it happen. Yeah. I think that's fun. That's the fun bit. I, I, I'm, I'm with you. I think that the, I've often had challenges where a, a, a budget has been outlined for a job and then when I've actually visited it in detail, with the agency I've been working with, 
they've come back and said, mm, do you know what? For that, we can go back and ask for more budget. And I think it, there is a perception of budget being um, inflexible and, and not having any movement. But I think if you challenge, if you challenge it in the right way. Yeah. It's, we, you it's know, the business case, isn't it? At the, at the end of it all, it's not the cost per unit. It's, the, it's, it's what the print media does for you as a business. And if you argue for it on the basis of what it does in terms of lead generation or the business case, then, um, then suddenly it's a, it's a different kind of story. But, but often you see productions that <clears throat> have had lots of money thrown at it and quite frankly it looks a bloody mess because it's been over engineered over designed over specced and you know in, in a way it just gets in the way of communication so i think it is a, a again a responsibility of you know good design that communicates um i got i got another question for you here um this is from um Actually, from my good friend Ed Burke out in, um, in who may be in Canada at the moment, he's either in Canada or Doha. Um, as recycled raw materials, um, especially in textiles used for point of sale purposes, are more expensive to purchase, is it still too early for clients, in your opinion, to pay a premium for a certified green or recycled fiber product? Um, we're, we're actually currently working with, um, a very, very, um, purpose led fashion brand with, with a really strong purpose of sustainability, which sort of seems a bit of a contradiction in fashion, perhaps, um, that everything to do with this product, whether it be the swing cards, point of sale, um, so how they produce film shoots is responsible. I think it's probably down to, um, it's down to those people who really care again. You know, do they, do they really, and I, I think we're getting better at it. And that the more that we, um, you know, live through probably the last 12 months where we've had to, you know, think slightly differently of how to produce. And I, it, it is important to um, consumers who buy because, you know, certainly a, there's a handful of brands who do it because they care and at the same time they're getting noticed because we buy carefully, we consume carefully. And, you know, what was it that Volvo has announced today about 2030 for their electric? Yeah, the only, electric only cars from... from and, you know, the, there's a vast majority that... And that, no showrooms. And no showrooms. Oh, no. I, or was it you can't... You won't be able to buy for, through a showroom. No. I think there'll be showrooms, but you won't be able to buy through a showroom. You'll only be able to buy online. But right. yeah, it does point to the fact that the, the acceleration of these decisions, isn't it? That, that, that the market, the world needs to change to get to carbon um, zero 2050. And we have, we have a long way to go. So I think, yeah, my, my personal view is that anything that print companies do to march in the right direction will be appreciated and noticed. And certain people do pay a premium because mm. it is part of their um, whole makeup of, of a business. And I think they will become the thought leaders in, in their sectors because they're leading the way. There's a particular denim brand, um, um, based in the north of Wales, who just really care, really, really care. And to me, they, they're leaders in any denim. You know, it's just, it's so wonderful how they go about their business and go about making one pair of jeans. But, I mean, they are. Um, and I think they will be very closely followed. And I suppose maybe business models are, are shifting from the stack it high, sell it cheap, you know, no, no um, concern for the, the welfare of the of the manufacturing of the the resource uh, of growing you know whether it's the growing the cotton with 
GM and all this stuff through to the way that people are treated in factories out in the Far East to making the stuff to the aquatic pollution that goes alongside it. This accountability, I think that many consumers, providing that they have sufficient disposable income, will be able to um, justify buying less at a higher price. Mm-hmm. And it's that it's that gap, isn't it, between the less and the higher price that gives the margin that still makes the business growth um, possible. I think we're in very interesting times. I'm I'm just looking at the uh, at the clock, and sadly, it's um, you know we we could continue our discussion for for a good long while, but but we're not afforded that luxury. Um, Brian, I, I want to thank you so much for joining me today and coming and speaking with, with our attendees. It's, uh, it's really, really useful to us. Thank you um, to everyone for joining and participating. Um, we're actually now going to have a, a small break from uh, the coffee breaks. This is kind of concluding our, our first season, if you like. Um, we're going to step back in, in April and um, pull our plan together for the second season. Um, we've already got some, some very interesting uh, people coming to join us on new topics around uh, automation, sustainability and process control. So you, the registration links will be sent out in due course. Um, of course, if you're interested in watching this webinar, um, again and please feel free to check out our YouTube channel FESPA TV where it can be found from tomorrow and we will be sending out as always a, a survey um, which we'd be very grateful if you would complete to give us your feedback we are uh, we thrive on the basis of, of the feedback you give us I'm now going to share again um, the slide with my contact details and Brian's contact details. Uh, you know, we um, you can see our email addresses are here. If there are um, specific things that you want to follow up on, then then do get in touch. Um, I'm sorry that we haven't been able to get to all the questions today, uh, but you do have a means to reach out to us. So. I'd like to just say, finally, thank you for your time. Um, I hope you'll come back again. And uh, Brian, I wish you a, a very happy day. And I can't believe that you're going to be in Brighton tomorrow. In any um, normal, hope the sun shines. In any yeah. normal world, we would, be, uh, we would be going and having a beer. But of course, current restrictions, that's... Uh, beer that, and fish and chips. Yeah, yeah. So we'll have, to, we'll have to put that down for next time. Cool. Brilliant. Thanks. Thanks, Fesco. All right. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye-bye.